So many great things to do here in Seattle, but uh, one of the must-sees has got to be the Museum of Pop Culture in downtown. And Mark Langston, who played many years with the Mariners, He's a big music fan. Uh, you've been here a few times, I know that, yeah. right? Yes. The museum's amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, I can't wait to go take a tour of this place. But first of all, how did music become such a passion of yours? Yeah, I, I think it's anybody. Anybody that listens to music becomes a passion. And when I was a kid, you used to use music as a driver to get you ready for yeah. your games in high school. My buddies and I would sit in the car and crank it up and try to get ourselves the energy that we needed to participate for the day. Then when I got up here to the Northwest, started playing at the major league level, I could afford maybe a guitar <laughs> or two. That's kind of how it all parlayed. One of my good buddies who's going to join us here in a minute uh, really taught me start how to play guitar. And uh, that's where they, the music from listening to actually getting a chance to play it is uh, where that all came about. I cannot wait. And uh, maybe, maybe there's a chance you might play in a few minutes. Certainly. I, that's why I brought a guitarist <laughs> with me. And so I can, you know, in case I start stinking, I can turn off and he goes high. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a tour of this museum. Well, Langer, everywhere you go in this museum is littered with uh, the history of rock and roll. And I mean, you walk in here and check out, call it what, a guitar fountain? I mean, that's incredible <laughs> right there. It is unbelievable. This right here, I think it's, what, 500 guitars yeah. are involved in this uh, collage of... That's uh, incredible. Amazing different instruments and guitars, acoustic, electrics. There's a looks like a little drum kit in there. Amazing collage. A little of bit of everything. Stuff, a little bit right? of everything. And by the way, this guy right here looks like he might be able to play guitar. Do you, you know, know this guy? What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> My buddy Steve Hanna from the Pacific Northwest, and uh, he's the one that really got me into the music, as we talked about earlier playing the guitar. He was my guitar teacher when I played up here with the Mariners. Been involved in the music scene his whole life. Yeah. And uh, it, just a great uh, inspiration as far as playing the guitar. Crazy skills. He's been in plenty of bands that I've kind of maybe jumped into awesome. every now and then that he allowed me to. Uh, so Steve, Steve welcome. Yeah. Steve, why is this area such a great hotbed for music? And why has it been growing so much over the years? Well, it had its moments in the 90s where uh, grunge came about as a backlash to kind of the LA scene where all the bands were polished and the big hair and the spandex pants and very corporate and very, very polished. And so grunge came about as a reaction to that. And that's always kind of been a Seattle feel. And so you know, things changed from the 80s to the 90s yeah. and started right here. I love it. Well, uh, they got some great exhibits here. So let's go check some out. Let's One of it. them on display right now is all about the great David Bowie. Let's go that way. All right, uh, well, now on display is a David Bowie exhibit. And, fellas, you can see they got photos from his early days until his final days on stage. And <laughs> you were just telling me that you get mistaken for David Bowie. You, you, usually it's Chuck Finley, but uh, <laughs> David Bowie is the one that's come up more than anything else. I can't figure this one out. In fact, it might have been a month ago, a month and a half, ordered a pizza. Guy came to the door and goes, oh, well, actually, it wasn't a month and a half because David Bowie still hasn't been around. <laughs> so it's been a while. But uh, when I ordered a pizza, guy came to the door and goes, you're David Bowie. And I went, no, I'm not a David Bowie. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've had that comparison, but uh, I don't know. I'll take it as a compliment. He's a huge rock icon. And uh, to me, uh, you want to call me David Bowie, I'm OK with that any day of the week. Steve, when you think of David Bowie, what's one of the first things that comes to mind? His versatility. Uh, you know, he started off with uh, edgier things like uh, uh, in his early days with the Ziggy, and then later on when he branched out into the, brought in all the horn sections and all the production, uh, he was a chameleon, both yeah. visually and artistically. Yeah, some of these pictures are, are absolutely amazing, but uh, you guys were talking about guitar playing earlier. They got some guitars in here we need to check out. Let's do it. Uh, Let's you, do you it. You guys might never leave. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we are in what is simply called the Guitar Gallery, and uh, they have guitars from all the great rock legends. And fellas, I know that you're kind of licking the chops right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you want to break down some of this glass and take <laughs> one of these home right now. Yeah, the alarm might sound, but certainly <laughs> I've been eyeballing a few of these in here myself. And you know, we're sitting here in front of the old Gibson right here, and uh, Steve actually owns a Gibson. It's a white one now. You've had that thing forever. Yeah. And we saw these different guitars, different shapes, different sizes. It's all about the sound. Each one has their own unique sound. What draws you to that guitar? I think it's the feel, it's the width of the neck, the, the action of the strings. Uh, 
Uh, guys like Angus Young from ACDC have played this a lot. It's, it's a very light guitar. You can jump around on stage. Different guitars have different sustain qualities. It's all about physics, about the thickness of the wood and the type of wood it is. And it's, a, it's an art and a science. So like you mentioned, it's, it's kind of like having your own glove, your bat. It's, it's, everything's very specific to a guitar player. Absolutely. And just like if the play, baseball players, you have a certain glove that feels good. That's your game where you go with. Hitters are very particular about their bats. We actually see them go into the stands and they'll retrieve them if that's their gamer. They look for the grain and all of that. Same thing in the guitar world. I've actually walked through the Fender factory down in Southern California wow. and you could see in there the wood before it's even made into a guitar. Bonnie Raitt's wood. Her, she has her own section, like a wine section. It's the Bonnie Raitt wood. So she goes in here that's strictly picked for her. Artists, obviously at the elite level, they get to go in there and they get to look at the wood and, and then start make going awesome. from that direction. So cool. And I think uh, we got one more exhibit to look at, and I think he was a pretty good guitar player. From oh, what yeah, I understand. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. So, so let's go this way. All right. All right, we're now at the Jimi Hendrix Experience, and uh, Steve, it's Seattle's own Jimi yes. Hendrix, right? Yeah. When, yeah. You, when you think about Jimi and the way he played guitar, what made him so good? Well, he was an innovator. He was making sounds that nobody had made prior to that. He uh, set the bar for uh, millions of guitar players, and uh, you know he's a, a legend. Yeah, I, you look at Jimi Hendrix, and we talk about baseball too. Baseball switch hitters, guys that can swing from each side of the plate. Jimi Hendrix was actually left-handed and took a right-handed guitar and turned it over, and the stringing was all backwards for anybody else would <laughs> be awesome. confused on it. But for him, that was a natural way. That's the way he learned it. And if the show didn't go good, he could always light it on fire and create something else and get another guitar. <laughs> yeah, it must be nice, right? It must be nice. Okay, so now we're going to end this incredible tour and see if these guys can show us their uh, guitar playing chops. We'll see all if we right. make that happen. Out that door, gentlemen. Let's see if we can get there. I should have brought a pick. <laughs> For my own guitar, it's like picking. Well, great part about this museum, they have uh, these interactive rooms where you can actually play the instruments themselves. These two guys have been chomping at bit the entire afternoon, and we finally made it happen. So, uh, fellas, take it away and show us what you got. That was, I can't even see the dang thing. Hey, that's Steve. That's Mark. I can't, we don't have a band name yet. But we'll We're come working up with on something. It. Yes. Now, now it's time to go on tour. <laughs>